Music is everywhere these days. Technology has made it possible for us to bring the type of music that we love to listen to practically everywhere we go. When we listen to music, we find our moods and behaviors altered at once. Music affects not just individual persons but groups as well, and its effect is instantaneous. Anyone who's been to a concert in a huge venue can attest to the power of music in uplifting people's spirits and fostering cooperative and celebratory behaviors. Music has one more useful attribute. It makes it quite easy to relate to an emotion. Music has the power to magnify human feelings immediately, a characteristic that it shares with other art forms. The origin of music itself is very difficult to determine because, in all probability, it is likely to have begun with singing and clapping or beating the hands on different surfaces, for which there is, of course, no archaeological record. Voice would have been the first and most natural means of expression in our distant ancestors, used to bond socially or comfort a sleepless child. It is from these humble beginnings that the music we enjoy today evolved. Between at least 60,000 and 30,000 years ago, ancient humans experienced a type of cultural explosion. They started creating art in the form of paintings on cave walls, jewelry, and ornaments, and to bury their dead ceremonially. If we assume that these new forms of behavior reflect the emergence of intentionality, then music as we know it must have also emerged at least during this period. It is generally accepted that music emerged along with other art forms, but there is also a linguistic theory that suggests that music has a strong relationship with the intonation of speech. Another popular theory of the origin of music is that it emerged from rhythm, which became much more helpful to those participating in ritual dances. A related theory on the origin of music concerns the need to synchronize movements amongst a group of people. Stone Age musical instruments made from mammoth bones produce sound and are assumed to have helped our ancestors move together in synchrony. But some people believe that the need for synchrony was related to work and not ceremony. Music emerged to help people coordinate their movements while they engaged in productive activities. Charles Darwin, the proponent of the theory of evolution by the process of natural selection, has a rather interesting view on the origin of music. He related music as a form of sexual attraction. A more recent theory suggests that music originated primarily to lift people's spirits and unite them such that they became a close-knit society. This theory looks at music as a form of social glue. The proponents cited examples such as sports event themes, ritual drumming music, and military music to illustrate their point. The oldest musical instrument ever discovered is believed to be the Divye Babe flute, discovered in a cave in Slovenia in 1995, though this has been disputed. The item is a fragment of the femur of a cave bear, which has been dated 60,000 to 43,000 years old and has been pierced with spaced holes. Scientists who could not accept the possibility that Neanderthals were playing music rejected the claim and said the perfectly spaced and neatly carved holes are in fact the result of the bone fragment having been chewed by an animal. However, a general consensus of the Divye Babe flute is actually a musical instrument has been growing as the view of the Neanderthals from subhuman brutes to more sophisticated humans is changing. In 2008, another discovery was made. A bone flute in the Holy Fels cave near Ulm in Germany dating back 43,000 years. The five-hold flute has a V-shaped mouthpiece and is made from a vulture wing bone. It was one of several similar instruments found in the area, with others dating back to 35,000 years ago and made from mammoth ivory. The mammoth ivory flutes would have been especially challenging to make. Using only stone tools, the flute maker would have had to split a section of curved ivory along its natural grain. The two halves would then have been hollowed out, carved, and fitted together with an airtight seal. The cave in southern Germany contains early evidence for the occupation of Europe by Homo sapiens, and on announcing the discovery, scientists suggested that the finds demonstrate the presence of a well-established musical tradition at the time when modern humans colonized Europe. They suggested that music may have helped to maintain bonds between larger groups of humans, and this may have helped the species to expand both in numbers and in geographical range. Those who have rejected the finding of the Divye Babe flute have claimed that music played a role in maintenance of larger social networks which may have given modern humans the edge over the Neanderthals. However, looking at the images of the Divye Babe flute, which dates back to the time of the Neanderthals, it seems ridiculous to assume that it was made by the tooth holes of carnivores. As we move further through the history of music, we find increasing evidence of its key role in sacred and secular settings although the division into these categories was not defined in this way until many years later. Influences from the west to the east merged into pre-Christian music of the Greeks and later the Romans. Musical practices and conventions perhaps conveyed by traveling musicians brought a wealth of diversity and invention. 
Surviving Greek notation from this period of musical history has given scientists and musicologists alike a vital clue to the way that music of the time might have sounded. It certainly indicates remarkable links to the music that would follow, perhaps most notably through the use of modality in Greek music. In the frescoes and in some written accounts, including the Bible, we have learned about the instruments that featured in the Roman and Greek times and their significance to the cultures. The trumpet is an instrument of the announcement and splendid ceremony, and the lyre is an integral player in the songs of poets. Across Europe from the early parts of the first century, the monasteries and abbeys became the places where music became embedded into the lives of those devoted to God and their followers. Christianity had established itself, and with it came a new liturgy that demanded a new music. Although early Christian music had its roots in the practices and beliefs of the Hebrew people, what emerged from this was to become the basis for sacred music for centuries to come. The chants that were composed devoutly followed the sacred Latin text in a fashion that was tightly controlled and given only to the glory of God. Music was very much subservient to the words, without flourish or frivolity. It was Pope Gregory, 540-604 AD, who is credited with moving the progress of sacred music forward and developing what is now called Gregorian chant, characterized by the haunting sound of the open, perfect fifth. Some controversy surrounds this claim, but the name has stuck and the music remains distinct and vitally important as it moves away from plain chant towards polyphony. This, in turn, looked back to earlier times and customs, particularly in the music of the Jewish people where the idea of a static drone commonly underpinned a second vocal line. As we move forward in musical time, we begin to enter the medieval period of music, which can be generally agreed to span the period from around 500 AD up until the mid-15th century. By this time, music was a dominant art in taverns to cathedrals, practiced by kings to paupers alike. It was during this extended period of music that the sound of music becomes increasingly familiar. This is partly due to the development of musical notation, much of which has survived, that allows us a window back into this fascinating time. From the written music that survives, from the monasteries and other important accounts of musical practices, it's possible to assemble an image of a vibrant culture that ranges from the sacred to the secular. Throughout the medieval period, music slowly began to adopt ever more elaborate structures and devices that produced works of immense beauty and devotion. Hildegard von Bingen and Peritin pioneered many of the musical forms we still recognize today, including the motet and the sacred mass. Alongside these important forms came the madrigal, which often reflects the moods and feelings of the people of the time. Its wonderfully polyphonic form is both mesmerizing and delightful. If you liked our video, don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to our channel to learn more. Thank you.